My dear friends, today is the second Sunday after the Epiphany. It's also the feast of St. Ab Anthony the Abbot. If you have palms from last year or years laying around your house, please bring them in the next two Sundays, not thereafter. Uh, we need palms to burn for the ashes for Ash Wednesday. If you please bring them in a bag or a container and uh, we will burn them and redistribute them on Ash Wednesday. Yesterday I had the privilege of speaking with the ladies of the parish, the Sodality of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Enjoyed it very much and very grateful for all the ladies who partook in that morning of recollection I'm calling it. Next Saturday, we had the pro-life procession down at City Hall to Fountain Square. I do encourage you to be there. It's going to be dry, but it's going to be cold. So please dress accordingly. I ask you to please remember in your prayers Mrs. Betty Hyder of Mansalon near Cleveland. She was 90 years of age and she passed away on Thursday. I should have please remember Mr. Terry Lawson in your prayers. He passed away on Friday. The funeral arrangements will be listed online or on the church phone tree. These directives will be given to you. I'd like to congratulate the children on their Christmas concert and play. They did a very nice job. There's a lot of, it was very enjoyable being there with them this past week. I'd like to thank those who participated in the festivities last night in St. Susanna Hall. I'm very grateful to you. I think it's very wise for you and your parents to do such, to be surrounded by other good Catholics. My dear friends, in today's epistle, St. Paul gives us a roadmap of behavior, how we should behave, how we should be patient, how we should be for forgive those who've injured us, how we should weep with those who weep, how we should joy, rejoice with those who joy. St. Therese said that one of her greatest regrets was that she, in her life, did not contemplate as much as she would the human nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have all these books written about the divine nature of Christ, but very few written about the human nature of Christ. And she regretted that she did not know more, consider, ponder, meditate more upon this holy life of our Lord here on earth. We see in today's gospel how human Mary and Joseph were, Jesus were. We see how 100% human they were. And they were there to celebrate someone being united until eternity in holy matrimony. We see them celebrating. We see them t partaking of the wine. And actually when the wine runs out, Mary takes it upon herself. This miracle of today's Mass, Marriage Feast of Cana, is meant to show not only Christ's divinity, but the power of Mary's intercession with her divine Son. Mary is no less conscious today of your needs and what you want. I would say she's more conscious because you have many times sanctified your tongue with the precious body and blood of her divine son. Those at the marriage feast had not received communion once. You have had the waters of baptism poured upon your head, which has sanctified your soul. Why would the mother of God not be so solicitous for our needs and our desires? St. Paul gave us 
the road map here in today's epistle on how to live, let's touch upon drunkenness for a moment. Drunkenness is a very special evil. It's so special that our Lord mentions it by, doesn't mention every sin, but mentions drunkenness adul along with adultery, idolatry, fornication, as sins which exclude us from heaven. Getting back to the marriage feast, why was the Blessed Virgin so anxious to help? We went uh, three weeks ago, we meditated upon the birth of our Lord. Two weeks ago, we meditated upon his first spilling of blood, his circumcision. One week ago, we considered his epiphany and then his being presented and left, lost in the temple, so to speak. And now we, we're already at our Lord 30 years of age in a matter of three or four weeks in the liturgical year. Why was Our Lady so quick to compassion? It is precisely because for nine, I'm sure she would say short months, many of you mothers would say those are long months when you're carrying your child in your womb, for nine short months, the Sacred Heart beat in union with the Immaculate Heart. Her heart was lodged next to, his heart was lodged next to her heart. And when our Lord was born, Yes, that which was physical left her, but something remained. And it was the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ, which remained with the Blessed Virgin Mary till she ascended into heaven and still to this day remains with the Blessed Virgin. It lingered in her. We have in today's Mass the six water pots. Different scripture scholars tell us what these mean, and they, some of them have different ideas of what these six water pots mean. In general, they're symbolic of sin and the misery of mankind. That's how all mankind is without Jesus, without our Lord. They were set there by Mosaic law, by an observant Jew, for the ritual purification of the body, symbolic wash the feet and their whole bodies clean, as our Lord told St. Peter. They're set there to prepare the Jews for another purification, that of baptism, and then that of penance, which cleanses the soul after sin has touched it. These are sacraments of the dead because they have the power and the ability to raise the soul dead to sin, to life. These six water pots can also symbolize the six ways that lead to perfection, that lead to heaven. And the very first one is repentance. If the wicked repent, I will not remember their iniquities. Words of a God. Repentance is most important. I told the ladies yesterday and I stole most of what I said to them from Father Croc that when we die and are judged, the voices of our sins will cry from hell, he belongs to me. And if we die repentant, our advocate, whom you know as our Lord Jesus Christ, who's also our judge, his voice will cry down from heaven, he is mine, and his voice will silence the voices of hell. That's for the repentant sinner. The second of these pots is confession. It's a great miracle today, the marriage feast at Cana. But it is a greater miracle to have a mortal sin removed from the soul in the confessional. We have our Lord saying, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. The third water pot is that of almsgiving. Almsgiving is a very 
fruitful way of obtaining forgiveness for our sins. And I thank those of you who continuously support the alms fund. I thank you very much. Give alms and, thou, and behold all things are made clean, we read in St. Luke. The fourth had the privilege this past week of discussing, talking on the qualities of God and the Our Father. Why it's the most perfect prayer the ninth and 10th grade students can tell you because of its origin and because it asks for all that we need. But before it, we ask in the Our Father, we, we adore Almighty God. That's how our prayer should be. In that order, first adoration and then supplication, asking Almighty God for the things we need for body and for soul, for body that they may assist the soul. The fifth water pot, first repentance, second confession, third alms given, fourth forgiveness. The fifth is mortification. Mortification is the abstinence from certain pleasures the world has to offer. And through abstinence to the world, Scripture says, we sing the praises of God. That's one reason why God so values the vow of virginity, because man or woman offer up to God a most precious right that he's given to them for his honor and glory. The last is obedience. Obedience to, the, to our Lord, obedience to the apostles, obedience to your priest, obedience to your parents. Now you are clean by my words. Obedience has the power to purify the will and is so pleasing to Almighty God. If you love me, keep my commandments, our Lord said. Our resolve must be like those vessels made of stone, hard, where moisture cannot penetrate it. Our resolve must be endure beyond temptation. They didn't use those vessels once and throw them away. They were precious to them. It took a long time to make them and to waterproof them. Our resolve must endure beyond the temptation. We read in the Bible, scriptures, that each earthen vessel contained about two measures. This is symbolic of the twofold fear that we must have. The first, a fear of hell. The second and higher one, a fear of losing God. Fear is a wonderful thing. It keeps your sons from driving too recklessly. They fear a wreck, a crash. It, it, it reminds your children not to play with fire. They're afraid they'll get burnt. Fear is a wonderful thing. You don't go playing with a loaded gun. It might go off and somebody might be shot. But what is greater than fear, as we discussed yesterday with the ladies, is shame. How shame is, is more noble Sorry that we've offended our Lord. We're ashamed of that. It's a much higher motive. The two measures are the fear of hell and the fear of loss. Our Lord must be present at the marriage feast, but as Catholics, we anticipate a greater presence than simply there as a guest to perform a miracle. He is the life principle of our souls. He is grace himself. As a little boy, I remember we had a corn crib that we would grind up corn for the animals. And around the corn crib, vines would grow on the walls of the barn. And they had these flowers about half the size of a cup called morning glories. 
They would have deep, rich veins running through their white flowers. And every morning those flowers would be open to collect the morning dew. And every afternoon they would be closed. And that is how our Lord is as we approach him. He opens his heart to us to collect us and to give us every good thing from above. God love you. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.